one, guys. Darn. <laughs> I'm sad. Okay, I'm gonna get this thing to go away so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so um, <clears throat> I'm doing the training on weekly drafting meeting, as you can see. The key points that we're gonna to touch on are exactly what is a weekly drafting meeting, uh, when to schedule your weekly drafting meeting and who you should invite. Um, why is the weekly drafting meeting important? How to be most valuable as a PM in these meetings using Trello and BIM 360. Um, and then we're gonna go through a couple examples that come up from your drafting meeting and how to handle them. And then some time for questions and comments. So your weekly drafting meeting is pretty self-explanatory. It's your recurring meeting when your job is in the drafting stage to review progress and answer questions and concerns from drafting and engineering. When to schedule your weekly drafting meeting. The standard is for the PM to schedule once a week meeting, either Wednesday or Thursday, 1.30 to 4.30. The Swiss lays out the times for you and the days that you're supposed to do it. And it also tells you who to invite so you can either go to, let's see if this will open. I'm really bad with technology stuff, so I apologize ahead of time. And I'm on my dad's computer and it doesn't seem to be working. There it goes, cool. Um, so with the Swiss, it gives you the time, the times that you're supposed to set it up and to include the conference room drafting and then your drafter and it tells you all the necessary people. Um, um, and then there's more basically just the same information on the wiki. Um, I'm not going to click on that. Um, these meetings are typically one hour long. Sometimes they do run a little bit over if there's a lot of stuff to discuss with your drafter and you want to schedule this meeting when your shop drawings begin and conclude the meeting obviously after you've made your first submission to the GC and architect. So why are weekly drafting meetings important? This keeps all departments on the same page in the same loop. Everyone is aware of the direction the project is proceeding. In other words, it gives every department an opportunity for input because you should have your field, you should have jumpstart, you should have someone from the transition team, you have your drafters, you have Javier, you have James. Um, this enables their drafting process to run smooth, so you can help them address their concerns and questions immediately. And it provides a format to track and ask questions during the drafting process. So that way you can go back and see what changed, why it changed, when it changed. Um, and it provides a way for the PM to track the progress of the shop drawing. So you can see if you're going to meet your submittal date or if you're running behind or if you're running behind for takeoff so that you can raise your hand and say, oh, well, we're, we're behind. Um, and then questions are raised may need to be RFI'd and submitted so that you have a record of the answer and the direction from the architect and GC. Um, so how to be the most valuable in these meetings as a PM. You want to ensure that all departments attend the meeting and follow up with your field and express to them that this is their time for input. I feel like in the past, the field hasn't been super involved up front. And it's not until we get to, you know, get to the field that they have a lot of comments that they would like incorporated into the shop drawings or things that would make it better for them, or this was done the wrong way and they didn't like. They didn't like the way we drew a detail or a transition area. Um, now with the weekly drafting meetings is great because they are involved up front and hopefully it makes it easier for them when they get to the field as well. Um, when your job is in drafting, your drafter becomes your number one customer. So you want to do everything you can to help them run smooth, to remember to communicate information to them in transactions that thing that Watts talked about, make it clear. Um, and then you wanna review all the issues that you have on your BIM 360 model before the meeting and come to the meeting with answers to the questions. As your drafter can flow through tasks much easier if they have answers to what they, 
to what they need instead of starting on a task and then running into a problem and stopping and then starting on a different task. And then, you know, it's hard to be efficient in that way. Um, shop drawings are high up in the value stream. This means that having great shop drawings will prevent defects from traveling downstream, becoming bigger and bigger problems. Um, Dexter said, be an MVPM. And I liked that quote, so thanks, Dex. So Trello, when you start off your weekly drafting meetings, the PM is supposed to review the items one through 18 before the first meeting. Um, this gives you a checklist and it makes, makes sure that drafting has all the most up-to-date drawings and the most up-to-date Revit model that you know, you've got your your jumps, your JS2 finished and um, RFI1 is in. Um, also, the PM can assign tasks under the drafting to do card at, or create a new issue card if you want to track it that way too. And that the PM can also follow up on status of transition details or Lynn's questions or Lynn's items that she wants you to dig into. Um, so here's this expanded um, PM to check items on the right when first progress set is printed. So this is what you can use to review your first set of progress shop drawings. Um, they've also started the new process where they're put, trying to put stamps on the shop drawings and it's very similar to what's on here. Um, and then sub subsequent progress drawings to be checked with the list below. Um, BIM 360 is, is pretty cool how they can assign issues to particular places on the building. I'm going to see if this link will work. Sorry, I should have done this before. So you can click on your model. Sorry, this is so slow. But as you can see, as we've zoomed in, drafters can place issues around the building. So you can go through and actually look at the conditions and the 3D view really helps with that. So like here's an example of an issue. You click, click on it and it comes up with the description and then you get to see exactly where it is. Um, and during the meeting, the drafter can walk you through the BIM 360 model for your job. This really helps you see the progress that they've made around the building. And the 3D view really helps you understand your details better and understand those transition areas better. Um, some examples of issues we took from Pear Avenue. Um, the picture on the left, um, the architect wanted to notch the glass around the column and have the column pass through our system to the inside of the building. So uh, two options were explored, introducing a new horizontal or holding the stone palm in front of the glass. Uh, issues like this require input from the transition team, from Jumpstart in the field and from the architect and the GC. Um, another example of an issue is, it was noticed during drafting process that there was no substrate to attach to under the soffit. This triggered coordination with the GC and the architect. So. All of these are things that we want to come up and we want to work them out up front. 
that's it. Any questions? Yeah, I got a question, Shiloh. Um, so for my project right now, Santana West, the garage, I'm having like almost daily huddles a couple times a week. Does that take the place of this or? No, if you're doing daily huddles, you're still gonna have this once a week larger meeting. Uh, do your daily huddles include your field? No, they're invited, but um, okay. So I think it's more feasible for your field to know that they at least have to show up to one drafting meeting a week as opposed to your everyday stand up. Like the the weekly meeting is the one where everybody needs to be involved. You need to jump start there. You need a transition person there. You need your field there. Okay, so if I designate one of those meetings as a drafting meeting, that's fine, right? And then invite everybody and extend that meeting? Yeah. Okay. It has to be on one of those two days in the Swiss. And we're doing that too, Nick, for like Matilda, we have a day, we were having a daily stand up every day because it was going so fast and the drafters needed their stuff addressed daily. And then we just talked about the big issues that required input from everybody else on our, our one hour weekly meeting that we had. And that's, that's what this is called, the drafting, sorry. Okay. What's that Swiss called, uh, real quick, Shia? Uh, the operation. I think it's weekly just called meeting. weekly drafting meeting. What is it? Weekly. Operations weekly Operation. drafting meeting. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Cool. Anything else? I haven't. Hey, Shia. I haven't really used the. Uh, a360, are PMs also able to add issues or update them as you get answers? That's a good question. I haven't tried to add an issue. Um, I know you in the BIM 360 field, you can add issues. I don't know about just this regular BIM 360. So I'm sure it's very similar. I'm sure you would be able to. Mm -hmm. It's just finding the right process so we can all kind of do it the same way is going to be the, the trick. Yeah, you can do it. You can do it, but it's one of those things that if you're not doing it on a regular basis, it's kind of, um, I don't know. I mean, it's not you're not going to be very efficient at first. It's just something to get to learn and 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 to know how to do. Yeah, and I mean, hopefully, you don't have so many issues that you need to be uploading issues like instead of just going through them either in your daily standups with your drafter or during your your meeting, just bringing it up, you know. I think it's more valuable for the drafter because they're in the model the whole time and then that way they're, you know, able to kind of just pin their issues and move on. Okay. So they're, they're the ones really updating, bringing up the issues, the they get the answers and then they'll update. Yeah. So, hey, Shiloh, in, in your experience, um, I know on the Swiss here it says that the I mean, PM's running the meeting. Um, in my past experience, it, it's like the drafters preferred to run a meeting and it says here it's okay to do that um did you run the meeting or did you have the drafter run your meetings in my experience the drafter has always taken over but i've made tried to make sure that everyone's there that needs to be there and you know get it started and like get it finished and bring up you know steer it in the right direction if it starts going off but really the drafter kind of takes over because they're showing you what problems they're having. Paul, you're so literal. Hmm? I want to call you after this. Uh, it says that the PM's supposed to be running it, but uh, <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry, who is this? Who is this? <laughs> Heard. So Travis is doing this. Are you getting the same experience that Shiloh had, Travis, since you're going through this process on a weekly basis? Yeah, it's going pretty good. I run the meeting. I send out an agenda to all the guys before everybody's supposed to be there before the meeting. And then just add a couple items if there's some stuff that popped up in the design meetings that the field needs to um, look at. And um, Mike just chimes in when I need help, like pull up the Revit model and stuff like that. I'll walk through everything and then 
it's not difficult. The BIM 360 is pretty simple. Um, it's like Mike said, it's like playing whack-a-mole because every time I think I've got an issue resolved, they'll throw it back at me and put it back on there and I didn't give them the right answer. So um, it can get pretty, <laughs> it's the BIM 360, it can get, ugly. it can be a lot of comments that build up real quick, um, but um, it's not too bad. It's been going really good. Yeah. Can you title this the Whack-A-Mole Meeting? It is. Just wait. I'm not kidding. He told me that in the beginning. He's like, all right, we're about to play Whack-A-Mole. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then all of a sudden it was like, you know, I'm trying to put out the fire and it's like, nope. Yeah. And I feel like every drafter like has kind of their own little things that help them. Like I know I'm Matilda with Celine. She manages and organizes her like list of to-dos in her own way, which I'm not, I'm not opposed to at all because she brings it up on the screen at every meeting and she crosses off the stuff that she completed or she, she puts the stuff that she has issues with. So, I mean, whatever works best for your drafter kind of, you know, I always like to tell them at the beginning or in the first meeting to like, what works good for you guys also you know communication wise for me if i'm not answering an email text me call me if it's hot i want to get you an answer as soon as i can so just bug me yeah the one big thing that shiloh touched on was um the progress and the schedule uh i'm getting towards the end and you know we've pushed out a couple times and i put a schedule together based on what i thought and what mike thought and it just turned to be out to be a little bit more difficult than we anticipated. So just making sure everybody's aware when your takeoff's about to happen and you, your customer to be able to have time to review the drawings, kind of where you're at. And so everybody's on the same page. But that's that's one thing we've been talking a lot about the last three weeks. Because Yeah, it's, all, it's always a major thing with us, right? And I think that right now it's even harder kind of to pin down duration because, and I was speaking to Candace and Blake and Nick yesterday about this, but this is the thing I brought up in the Friday planning meeting, but it's hard for us to judge what their duration is now because drafting isn't just drafting a set of shop drawings for us to submit. They're modeling a building for takeoffs. So they're doing a lot more stuff behind the scenes now than we're aware of in order to get the model ready for takeoffs. And that's why Blake and Candace and Nick are gonna try to figure out exactly what all that is so that we can have a better idea of how long shops should actually take and what drafting's entire responsibilities are now. Because I think we're kind of, we've kind of gotten away from that with all the Revit changes. And as PMs, we don't really understand or fully know what their, their scope is now because it's definitely gotten larger. And that's something that I've experienced on Matilda. They're, they have, they're not having as hard of time. If they were just to give me a set of drawings to submit, it would be a different story. But because they're doing so much other stuff to prep for takeoffs, it's taking them a lot longer. Yeah. I got a question for you, Shai. Um, there was one week when Travis was out and Bellis assigned two or three things for me to look into for him. Um, so I actually got an email from Mike saying like, hey, you've been assigned this task in BIM 360. Does that happen automatically? Yep. Or is that the draft, do I have to sign up for anything or does drafting just take care of that? I think drafting does that. If they assign an issue to you, it's getting sent to you as an email. All right. And then, so then, and then we're able to filter all the open items in BIM 360, right? And we can use that for like design meetings to kind of create an agenda so we can see all the open ones versus all the closed ones as we're working through this. If that helps you and that's how you want to do it, then heck yeah. You, you yeah. Good yeah, you can. That's what I did on 1180 Main Street. Okay. And then the only other thing was just with the way, like, like Shai was saying, you know, with the modeling being the more important thing, you know, like on Trav's job and like Eric's job, like we haven't been getting progress drawings very frequently or as often as I thought we were, you know, and we're doing shops later and then they model and, you know, so like the weekly progress set, you know, isn't, I don't know, it, it's, you're not it getting like 12 sets of progress. It's, you know what I mean? You're not getting it. It's like waiting for sheets to publish. And it's, so it's kind of something else, like making sure your field guide goes to the meeting. It's like, you kind of got a hound drafting to actually turn out sheets for you to actually be able to look at if you want to get any 
bang for your buck there. Yeah, and I mean, you should definitely be bringing that up. Like, when are you guys going to print next? I, I always ask that. And sometimes it doesn't make sense for them to print one week. Maybe it makes more sense for them to hold off a week and print. But as long as you're having the conversation, then yeah. you're, you're aware of what's going on. James and oh, Mordor can get to that. Since we met, I met with the, um, the shop drawing team to go over the stamps and stuff like that. And it's been a couple weeks. It's going really well, but we're printing a, a new set every week after the, um, the drafting meet, so. I do, the stamps do, I feel like the stamps are great. Like, I, cause we tried those on them until the, the only thing that that's difficult for drafting is we are adding a lot to their plate. So we've added all this stuff for, for takeoff. And then, you know what I mean? It takes time for them to print and like plot. And then it takes time for them to paste all the, the stamps on the drawings too. So. It's just something to think about because it was difficult for my drafting team on Matilda with such a fast paced schedule. They tried to do it and it took them a very long time. And then it was like a few progress sets after that. They kept having to ask James, can we not do it? We don't have the time. So it's just one of those things where, you know, like I said, we really got to figure out exactly everything that draft we're requiring from drafting and that takeoff is requiring from drafting so that we can better understand how long it really is going to take them to do stuff. I think they got it down. The stamps, after talking to Mike, because Jacob's doing the sheets for um, Mike. Mike's still modeling. And, um, what's that? It's going faster. Yeah, it seems like it's going better. I, I met with the Kaizen team, and it seems like it's not too bad. I mean, it's pretty interesting because we had like three weeks where I was using the stamps, and then this past week, I was reviewing the set and I'm like, damn, where are the stamps at? Because I was used to using them and I had, really to, get, I had yeah. to get a hold of Mike and get them to, they forgot to put them on the set, but it is a good tool. It helps you not miss things because it's just right there for you to check off. Yeah. And it depends on how you use it. Like I was putting on it what pages I checked. So I knew when a new set came out where I left off, um, but it's, um, yeah, you're right. You need to look at the whole drafting package because Mike tells me sometimes he gets tied up with coordination behind the scenes that I don't know about where he's reaching out to precast or whatever. And all that little stuff adds up to those guys. Um, yeah. Yep. Awesome, guys. Yeah, good job, Good job, Shiloh. Hello. Hey, Shiloh. See you guys later. Good job, Shiloh. See you. Good job. Bye. Nice job, Shiloh. Bye, Felicia.